The co-founders of the Occupy Central movement in Hong Kong have announced they would surrender and have urged protesters to retreat. The three original founders tearfully made their announcement after hundreds of pro-democracy protesters clashed with police late on Sunday, leaving dozens injured. It was one of the worst nights of violence since the movement began. Occupy Central leader Benny Tai said that to protect the safety of protesters, they would take different routes to fight their cause. They also said they would turn themselves into the police. Well, joining me now on the phone is Tom Grundy, our Hong Kong reporter. Tom, uh, there have been, not been as many protests, I don't think, but demonstrations have intensified over the last few days. And now this from Benny Tai. What's going on? Well, yes, it was a long night of unrest uh, on Sunday. Things uh, settled down into Monday. But uh, at, at this afternoon at a press conference, Benny Tai and the three original conveners of the Occupy Central movement said that they would turn themselves into police under the unlawful assembly laws in Hong Kong tomorrow. However, they are the group that uh, set the original template for uh, the Occupy campaign. The umbrella movement, as we know it, has been more led by student groups such as Scholarism and the Hong Kong Federation of Students. And certainly over the last few weeks, we've seen that those original conveners have had very little influence as they've, as they've taken a back seat uh, to some of the protests here. So I very much doubt that protesters on the ground will react to their calls to uh, retreat. We've also seen today um, the Scholarism uh, founder Joshua Wong, uh, the 18-year-old behind uh, a lot of the developments in the movement, uh, call a hunger strike in order to open dialogue with the uh, Chief Secretary Carrie Lam. Uh, for many weeks, the government has been unresponsive uh, to calls for talks uh, with the students and say, say the dialogue has uh, expired. Yes. Um, in regards with regards to the hunger strike, I mean, is that likely to put any pressure on the government at all? Um, I, I very much doubt it at, at this stage, uh, to be honest. And uh, th there is a deadlock within the movement itself uh, as, as whether things should be escalated uh, any further. And, and that is why I think we, we saw some of that unrest on Sunday when it was decided that uh, protesters would try to surround government headquarters. And uh, there was a, a lot of uh, uh, tear gas, uh, sorry, pepper spray and baton uh, usage by police there as around 4,000 uh, were mobilized around the main Occupy Admiralty Camp. Um, it does feel like we're entering somewhat more of an end game, though, as some sources have told the uh, local South China Morning Post that uh, uh, the main Admiralty site and its smaller annex in, in the shopping districts of Causeway Bay may be cleared, you know, by the end of, of this year. Um, Alex Chow, another convener uh, of, of the Hong Kong Federation of Students, has also admitted that that escalation on Sunday did not achieve its uh, original objective to, to power paralyze the government. So it's very unclear now, um, despite this announcement of a hunger strike, what the next sort of wider movement may be. If these Hong Kong pro-democracy protests are running out of energy and, and indeed options, as you were saying, exactly what has this achieved? Well, there are many things um, that we can say that the movement has won and many things it has lost. None of its uh, original aims to, to, to force the government to, uh, into constitutional reform or, or the, the issue of the nominating committee, whereby China has insisted that uh, Hong Kong can have one person, one vote, universal suffrage, but only with a choice of two or three pre-selected candidates. On these issues, there has been no achievement at all, but certainly in what and exposing uh, what students say is the illegitimacy of the local and national governments and, I suppose, uh, uh, gathering the, these new symbols for the pro-democracy movement of the umbrellas, the yellow ribbons, the protest songs, uh, simply, you know, the, the idea of the protests and, and the, the day uh, this all came together in September with the tear gas incident, um, those, I think, will be passed down over, over the, the months and probably years as this has been part of or the climax of a 30-year pro-democracy movement in the autonomous uh, uh, ex-British colony. And Tom, whatever these uh, protests have or haven't achieved, as you were just saying, what it certainly has done is sent a message to the, the wider world. Now, Benny Tai was saying that they would take different routes to find their cause. What do you think the next move is now for Occupy Central? 
Well, you're right in that it certainly has put um, Hong Kong on the map. I mean, before this, few understood what its special status entailed. Uh, many believe now that this is being drawn out because the courts, via injunctions or, or the police uh, with force, uh, are being applied to a problem that needs that needs a political solution. Um, the original Occupy Central conveners have said that they will take uh, their campaign now to uh, institutions and universities to for debates to the community to, to reach out further uh, and, uh, and 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 to have a, a charter a social charter uh, but um, I don't think these things will influence much the the, the student movement and it, it, it's very uncertain uh, where where that will go from here and as the sites continue to be occupied in these two key areas, uh, public support, at least for the occupation, seems to be waning, uh, with with at least 80% in, in a recent survey saying that they believe the Occupy camps uh, should be removed. Okay, Tom Grundy, live for us in Hong Kong. Thank you.